The NDP began 2016 on the heels of an election that saw them lose more than half their seats in Parliament, as well as their role as the official opposition. Then in April, members voted to begin the race for a new leader, with Tom Mulcair slated to stay on, but only until the fall of 2017. Now, despite the turnover in his party, Mulcair still had a front row seat to all the action on Parliament Hill so far this year, and he joins us this morning to look back on 2016 and the year that it was. Good morning, sir. Good morning, and Maddie. Well, as we mentioned, you were a front row spectator to Justin Trudeau's first full year as prime minister. If you had to grade the prime minister on year one, what would that be? I think I'd have to give him a H. Uh, for Harper. And I think the point was extremely well made before by Evan Solomon when he was saying Mr. Trudeau's policies in many areas are Stephen Harper's policies, but delivered with a smile. So if you've still got the same targets for greenhouse gas emissions, you're still going to miss the Paris obligations that were set down in last year's deal. If you're still cutting by 3% the transfer in health care, provinces are still going to have as much problem delivering health care, and the federal government is withdrawing more and more key areas like a promise from the Liberals that they said they would do, which is bring in a new voting system to make it fairer, get rid of the unfair system that produces these fake majorities when you get 39 percent. Now Mr. Trudeau is trying to back away from that. So it's, it's been a year where we got to see uh, there was quite a, quite a difference between what was said during the campaign. I don't think anybody who voted for Mr. Trudeau voted for Stephen Harper's climate change plan or Stephen Harper's health care plan. So a lot of people are disappointed with what they've seen. I'm no teacher, but that sounds more like a six than an eight. <laughs> it was supposed to be H, what I was saying. Oh, the, an the letter H. <laughs> H for Harper. All right, well, let's move on. You've been critical of Trudeau's stance on pipelines, et cetera. Is there anything he's done that you can get behind, that you can agree with? Well, I mean, it would have been uh, nice to see him move forward on, and, you know, they did a process in parliamentary committee on democratic reform. So this is changing the way we vote, getting beyond the first past the post system that we now have. And if he does bring forward the legislation after Christmas, I'm going to be the first uh, to congratulate him because he's supposed to do that. That would make it a more fair system, head towards what 90 percent of the people who appeared said, a proportional system. So, yeah, that would be a really good move in the right direction. Uh, Megan Leslie, Paul Dewar, Peter Stauffer, those are just some of the big names that who weren't back in the House of Commons this year. Uh, what does it do to a party to lose people like that? Those are incredible parliamentarians and great people and, and friends. And you've just named a, a few of the people who didn't make it through. But again, the NDP managed to elect 44 people in last year's election, despite the fact that there was a strong move to get rid of Stephen Harper. And we can take a lot of credit for that, for the work that we had done against him in big files like the Senate scandal. So 44 people, including 16 new MPs, is a, is a redoubtable force. And we've been giving a good accounting of ourselves. You might have noticed that I actually enjoy my job, uh, you know, leading the charge, uh, holding the government to account, because there's a lot to hold them to account for, as you and I have just given examples and Evan Solomon reinforced before. So we're going to continue doing that and uh, make sure that all those great people and a lot more come in the next time. But for a wave uh, that brought in a majority Liberal government, when I go back historically, what happened when the Liberals would boot out the Conservatives, like happened when Chrétien got rid of uh, the Mulroney uh, era, I, I think we did quite well, all things considered. All right. There are 14 people, as you know, and soon could be 15, that are running for the Conservative leadership. But as of yet, no official candidates in the race to be the leader of the NDP. Are you concerned about what appears to be a a lack of interest in taking over? Uh, I, believe me, it's going to be a really exciting race. Don't forget, we set a timeline for next fall, so almost a year away. And one of the key things, Anne-Marie, that people wanted to see was who the Conservative leader was going to be. We were going to give ourselves the advantage of having that information when we went to vote for a new leader. And I was asked by the caucus and by the party to, to stay on and steer uh, our ship uh, into the right port and on time. And we're doing that. We're doing a lot of cleanup in terms of administration. And politically, we're, we're giving a good accounting of ourselves. But you're going to see very strong, exciting candidates declaring very soon after Christmas. And I'm looking forward to a, to a great race, as is every member of the NDP. What does this next leader of the party need to do to bring, to bring the NDP back into relevancy and to unseat Justin Trudeau in 2019? 
Well, these things are cyclical. I guess the older you get and the more experience you've got, the more equanimity you have when you look at these things because you're able to look over the horizon. And it's just that. There's going to be a leadership uh, race in the fall. That'll create in and of itself a lot of interest. New ideas will be on the table. New people uh, will be added to the mix. And that's going to bring up our notoriety and people will take a lot more notice. And that's going to be precisely two years out from the next election. And that's, again, a nice timeline, a nice curve to be pitching your story, talking to Canadians about the fact that for 150 years, we've been told that we have no choice. We have to alternate between the Conservatives and the Liberals, and even though they promise real change, very often you get more of the same. So the NDP has always been that strong voice for the average Canadian, saying, look, you know, you deserve a, a, a full-time, well-paid job. We've been doing great work on that. Nikki Ashton, tremendous work showing that the young generation today is being told by Bill Morneau and Justin Trudeau, get used to it, this job churn, that's their word, part-time, low-paid, precarious work, that's your lot in life. We don't agree with that. We want to create good, full-time jobs. So we want to make sure that corporations start paying their fair share of taxes. We're the only ones who wanted to increase corporate taxes in the last campaign. We're going to continue with that sort of difference, aiming for more universal social programs like Pharmacare. That's the type of idea we've had on the table in the past, and I'm sure the exciting crew that's going to be running in the campaign will be doing just that, bringing this type of new strong idea to the Canadian voting public, and I think that'll work. Well, Merry Christmas and a happy holidays to you, sir. Tom Mulcair, leader of All the... All the best to you and your family. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Anne-Marie. Bye-bye.